Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast presented by Zwift, the online cycling platform that makes training fun. Here for the second monument of the year, Ronde van Vlaanderen, men and women's previews. More on my misguided holiday planning in a second. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm in a different location, as you can tell. But Tour of Flanders, 270Ks, Asgren in a head-to-head sprint with MVDP won last year, MVDP in head-to-head sprint with Wout won last uh, the year before. Betiel, Terpster, Schilbert, Sagan, Christoph, Cancellara, big names have won this race in the last decade. What's the profile of NG? Uh, and maybe explain why it's different from E3, if you can. First of all, according to my government, it's the uh, most important profile in the history of cycling. And we've got a 273... Really? Kil- <laughs> I'm forced to say it is okay. <laughs> <laughs> 273 kilometers in length. We've got a very uh, similar parkour to last year. There's tiny changes, but you won't notice it too much throughout the parkour, to be honest. The race really starts kicking off the first time at roughly 135 kilometers into the race so halfway to race the first time we go over the outer quadramond which is known to be uh, one of the key aspects of this race not the first time but it also comes back later on in the race there's hills after that first outer quadramond like the Kortegir for example the Wolvenberg and the Molenberg that action can happen I think last year on the Molenberg that quick step tried to split it but it didn't work and after that Molenberg there's a bit of an in-between section where it isn't that crazy there's the Benendries the Valkenberg but those are not the most yeah the craziest climbs after that again Berchtenhauter Kanadiberg climbs in between but then we come towards like the last 60 kilometers and that's where the real key moments of the race occur we've got the second time the Outer Quadramont in combination with the Paterberg just after that that is where stuff can happen and if it doesn't happen there, there's still the Koppenberg after that, the Steenbergdries, we've got the Tyenberg, and after that, the Oude Kruisberg. And we go back to that Oude Quartermond and Paterberg combo in the last 20-ish kilometers. I'm personally curious to see whether it opens up already on the second Oude Quartermond, or whether it's a uh, relaxed moment there, before the storm happens on that Paterberg just after, or on the last Oude Quartermond Paterberg section. Where do you think the race is going to open up? I think... It may not happen. I think the key for the other teams with how ridiculous Jumbo Visma have been with Tim de Klerk apparently coming back. He's come back from sickness and he's racing even today at Duas Dour. I think the key is for them to open up early and try and create a move like in Gent Wevelhem where Jumbo gets some riders in that move and then late Jumbo Visma are like, oh shit, this actually isn't good for us you know what i mean like they get a the note and mike turnison into a move with like morich germai oh, it's not doing it i haven't in favor him uh, with other likes guys even asgren and then yumbo don't chase like they didn't in favor him they're like this is great 30 seconds total chasing that can change very quickly from shit this is a minute total energy have stopped and turnison just got dropped I think so. That's why I think other teams should open it up early. I think 100% Jumbo Visma are going to be asked to pace Benji. I cannot see a situation where, I mean, Trek might. I think Quick Step won't help them. Didn't Quick Step, what was that behind the scenes? Uh, the Tour of Flanders put out a really good behind the scenes, like Ronda documentary, usually. And like Wilfred Peters and co they're like we're not helping pace the break at all i don't think quick step will help it it's all yumbo early doors i think so as well they have the responsibility after dominating most of the cobble season so far even in wevelgem they came second but they were the team that was seen as the big threat and it was only girmai that ended up beating laporte in the sprint in the end all the other teams did not beat laporte that day so would feel like it's a responsibility of Yumbo once again that they do the work here. And with RVV, it's even more like that because at E3, that's more the type of race that we have right now in RVV compared to Gendwevelgem. This is a pure cobble race. So Laporte and Wout Finado, right, is that in my personal opinion are on the top six, top seven list of favorites for this race, perhaps. And yeah, if I was a competitor, I'd say you need to control the race before we get to the cobble climbs. And after that, pretty much as well to be honest so i agree that other teams need to find different ways 
then to let the responsibility of opening up the reins also to Yumbo. Because that opening up is usually where it damages every other team but Yumbo, because Yumbo can be at the front and can be positioned well because they have the numbers to get their riders to the front. And as a consequence, the other riders, other teams don't necessarily have five riders left at the second out of Quartermont, don't have the strength to get their team towards the front. And as a consequence, are likely not in the perfect position starting that second out of Quartermont, for example, leaving them lost in the tracks behind. And I think that's a big key point here that while Yumbo should have the responsibility to control, the other teams should probably open it up. 100%. If you if you let Yumbo go with three guys to the base of Timeberg, second out of Quamon, do a lead out, and then they get those three in a group of six, you are in big, big trouble. We saw Wal Van Aert, he uh, unveiled him, badly positioned, last camel, and, uh, you know, he, he, he hard-dropped Asgren. Oh, I was going to have been in a break. And he still put like 10, 12 seconds into the group and 35Ks with a headwind, not going to solo. This is a different... There ain't a group of 50 guys with multiple domestiques on the last Paterberg or even the, the Timeberg or second last Paterberg in Ronde van Vlaanderen. So, yeah, it's going to be... I think the other teams have to be aggressive. Before we get into the favourites and what we think... Uh, why, whether they should be favourites or not, mention our show partners. Zwift. Zwift is the online cycling platform that makes training fun. If you just completed the tour of Watopia, well, I just did actually, and then I was going to come down and do a test in San Feliu in the Costa Brava, and now I'm really big mad I didn't bring my Zwift setup because I have wall-to-wall -wall rain uh, the entirety of this week, so already missing my Swift setup in Andorra, and I'm pretty mad about it, but that's my fault for booking <laughs> a holiday, I guess, during Flanders Week. As you know, Zwift is the title sponsor of Paris-Roubaix Femme avec Swift and the Tour de France Femme avec Swift, the inaugural edition this year, which hopefully Benji and I will be visiting in person at the end of July. If you want to check out Zwift, you can do a free seven-day trial through Zwift.com through the link down below. Stay tuned for further LRCP group rides on the platform. All right, the favourites, Benji. Well, for not the favourite. Second favourite is Matthew van der Poel off like one race day in Settimana. Then I think it's Asgren, Bertiol, and Laporte's up there, about fourth, fifth favourite, as you said. Betty I can't Hall? get. No, nah, maybe I made that up. I can't get Bet365 <laughs> to load for me in Spain. It won't load Flanders. Um, maybe they, I think they took it off the board because of Philippe doing the recon. They're like, oh, what's this? But anyway, the top two, uh, or top three are MVP, Wow, Asgren. I think the order is correct. I don't, I don't think you can make MVP the favorite over Wow. I think it's closer than people suggest. And I think that Wout van Aert's favorite role is mainly because the team surrounding him is strong enough to give him benefits compared to Alperson, who have not been able to show that, despite I do think that Johnny Vermeers will be a key role for Van der Poel in this race as well. He was very strong at Gent Wevelgem and is likely going to do that again, I would say. And I guess we'll figure out if he's actually signed up for this race because he did crash in Gent Wevelgem, but did work after. But when it comes to the uh, team of Jumbo Visma, let's start with that, let's say, because he is the big favorite on paper and has done pretty well so far. Laporte, key rider in that team. Benoit, Affini, Tunison, Rosen, Van Hoydonk are the ones that are currently on paper. The start lists are not 100% confirmed yet, so expect some changes in that in the coming days. But when it comes to this team, do you consider Laporte a co-leader? Because I might. Yeah, yeah, he can win Flanders easily. Like, well, not easily, well, but <laughs> there's, there's a world in which Laporte wins Flanders where he goes in a move just like a hand fable him and he got beaten by Binium who's really, really fast. Laporte still dusted the other two and maybe made a tactical error in the last K too. So, yeah, I think Laporte in a move with... that That is the question though. Now, let's let's pick on that, Benji. Hand fable him, Wout was happy for Laporte to do his thing in that group before. But if Laporte goes with Asgren in Flanders, uh, it, yeah. if Laporte's ahead, does Wout and then the group Wout's in can't close it? Are Yumbo just happy with, with that situation? Is Wout going to be happy with taking their chances with Laporte in a sprint against 
I don't know. Against Bessiol, you would be. Against Asgren, he sits on, right? So it's still a really good tactical situation. Yeah, I agree. It's still a, a tactical situation that fits because likely Asgren is going to be the one pacing in that group, like you mentioned, because Laporte should be sitting on if Wout Fanat is behind. Unless there's a situation where Wout has clearly said that his legs are not that great that day. That is still possible. He's still human. But it also depends on what point in the race it is. If, for example, we are like still at the second last Quartermont, well, perhaps... He can ride a tiny bit with Asgreen and then later sit up to have like someone ahead so other teams need to chase. But on the other hand, it's very risky to do that with Asgreen, so I wouldn't necessarily do that. But when it comes to the sprint, if they go to a sprint, Asgreen and Laporte, I'm saying Laporte takes it. I unironically do think that Laporte can beat Asgreen at the end of a race like this. And yes, we saw Asgreen beat Van der Poel last year, but he did start the sprint with like 230 meters to go. <laughs> so on paper, that fits Laporte a bit better than Van Der Poel, I would say, a longer sprint as well. But in that scenario, like you say, it's going to depend a bit on Wout's patience, what they do as well, because Wout's the guy that just keeps on pacing, doesn't he? Even when he sometimes doesn't need to pace, he's pacing at the front of a group. And I'm curious whether that's going to lead, like in previous years, sometimes that they're in a situation where he spent so much energy at the front of a group, where at the end of the race, he's lacking a tiny bit to make it because last year he, I think, dropped on the last out of Quartermont from Asgreen and Van der Poel, and he was never to be seen again. Then again, his positioning on the previous climbs was that terrible that he had to close an entire gap after the uh, second out of Quartermont. So there, there's big differences there. When it comes to um, the opponents of Jumbo here, do you think they will be happy if, for example, uh, let me find a situation here. Let's say Benoden... Furness is, is up the road and they get secondary outsiders of their squad in the breakaway. Do you think that they're down to let that flow and say, okay, well, if Avanade is neutralized and Laporte, we're fine with giving this a go? It really depends. If it's Sturvin, yes, for Trek. If it's, I don't know, uh, who are even the other teams? If it's like a... Yeah. Uh, the Wolf or someone, I guess Lampard or Seneschal is an example, or Stibar is an example. I think they'll be cagey. I think they've seen how aggressive Yumbo have been with Benoit and Co. Like Benoit will ruin his own race to ruin the other guy's race yep. so Wout and Laporte can win. I still think, though, this is the hardest cobble challenge Yumbo have had because we have MVDP on the start list and you can't start. Wout Van Aert starting Kemmel in bad position, getting a gap. He's not going to get a gap on Van der Poel if he doesn't play this absolutely perfectly, if they don't roll him over with teammates. You can't make mistakes. MVP is so good, and he's laser-focused always on Wout van Aert. Remember, Moric, go and watch the tape. If you think I'm making this conspiracy up, go watch the Poggio Descent tape. Matthew van der Poel cuts Wout off on a couple of corners. Moric attacks. MVP blocks Wout, then looks at Wout to close Moric. Gap is opened. He rides to defend against Wout, number one reason. Um, so that, But that's he should at Tour of Flanders because he's the big favourite. Uh, his team, though, no Vermeersh initially. Philipson, Gogol, Dillier, Murisa, Rezbeck, Vermota, not a great team. How do you think? I think they just got to bait him, Benji, create situations which they've never done, ever, where MVP is having to close the group with Laporte. Ooh, that's interesting, but we never really had a situation where Jumbo had that secondary rider to bait Van der Poel in the first place, right? Because last year that was not the case, but it was alone against the competition there. So it's intriguing if they can do that this year. But I do think that if Laporte goes, that Van der Poel might generally still look at Fanat. And that's an intriguing aspect of what Jumbo could try and achieve by using Laporte to their advantage in that sense but i do think the other riders will see laporte as a big contender for this race as well and i agree that alpson's team is not the strongest at the start line i think their main focus is going to be trying to position van der Poel for the most important moments when they still have riders there and when it, when they're gone he's going to have to do it alone and there's not much else to say there he's a solo rider when it comes to his team in my eyes for the final at least and he's going to do have to do a lot alone and whether Yumbo can use that or not depends on how many Yumbo riders we get over the second out of Quartermont and over the uh, third out of Quartermont, depending if 
for example, Laporte and Van Aert are still there with a Van der Poel and an Osgren. If those are two, they can roll attacks on the others, you know? So that's what I mean in that situation. Then we look at Quick Step in that situation where last year they had a very strong team with Osgren obviously as leader right now. Alaphilly, a bit of a rumor on sports that he might be showing up because he was seen training, but he's also got like a, a villa near the uh, place where they were training. So it could just be coincidental that he was training with them on the cobble climbs, but why would he, he do that Instagram. in advance of his hill classics? What, he, said on Insta- he said on Instagram he's doing it's only is his first race back next oh, okay. week. But uh, maybe that's a red herring. Oh, yeah, long yeah. Con. I don't know. <laughs> maybe you want, he's. I think the emissions screwed us with the MSR preview. But yeah, the I. I think he's doing it Zulia. Uh, okay. But I think he should have done Flanders. <laughs> I mean, but I guess he's such a star. He wants to focus on the edge. But yeah, like I think Asgren Benji has been almost just as strong as last year, just tactically. Lack of teammates, Yumbo role. Though Yumbo have been quick step in quick step, and I still think he can win this. I think he needs to team up with MVP. Mm-hmm. Hope they go clear again like last year, and then hope he can win the sprint. And they drop Wow in a group of three, because uh, I think Wow would work with them in a group of three, and I don't think he should. Uh, that's my hot take. I think Wow should sit on, but he won't do it. I don't think. See, it'd be too dishonorable. <laughs> uh, Lampard, <laughs> Valerini, Honore, Seneschal, Stibar, Van Leeuwen the sort of is Bar even like the thing is Benji they need these guys to get into secondary moves ahead who's able to do that right now I guess Honore crashed which one of these guys is the strongest Lampard he said he's riding into form I think Seneschal is one of the riders I'm picking at right now because I'd argue that he was strong at the E3 he was in that group with Osgrain just before the part of it when he uh when he had his puncture so I'd argue he's one of the stronger riders next to Asgren in this race. Lampard running into form is interesting. I think his main focus is getting in form by E3, uh, by Roubaix, I mean. E3 is a week ago. That won't happen. <laughs> but um, when it comes to RVV, I do expect him to be somewhat well supportive towards Asgren. But when it comes to Ballerini, it's kind of also on the edge. You know, he was relatively okay at E3, where he almost made a group of Seneschal, but then dropped a bit later. And... I don't know, perhaps he could play a role in the mid-term on that second out of Guatemala in this race, for example. Stibar, I haven't seen much from him this year, to be honest, so I can't really say I expect too much. Von Lederberg is one of those riders that is expected to do stuff early and not necessarily when the race matters. So that's my personal view on Quick Step, and I agree when it comes to Algren that he's been relatively strong this year. He had a um, a average lead-up. When it comes to uh, Algarve, didn't look that amazing yet after having, I think, COVID early season or something. Yeah, or an omelette something. Bad. Yeah, and then towards the end of February, he started moving better and better, and now he's actually in good form for these races. And I truly think that he's going to be one of the favorites for this race on Sunday. And I, I just don't think, like, let's think about this. When there is a sprint between Van der Poel and Asgreen at the end of RVV, Van der Poel is the one that wants a shorter sprint because he wants his acceleration. But if Asgreen goes to the line with Wout van Aert, I think they both have the advantage in longer sprints. Who do you think wins then? Um, I got little confidence in Wout's sprint. I'm always, Wout should just go solo. I don't, I don't like sprints. Anything can happen in a sprint. As we've seen in Flanders two years in a row, as we saw in E3 or not Hen Vabelham, rather they didn't sprint against each other in E3. Um, <laughs> you know, to answer your question, though, wow, probably seven times out of ten, I would say, depending on how the race is shaped up. But Asgren, it depends how much they've bled Asgren. They bled him in E3 before when Laporte and Wout attacked. A name we haven't mentioned, we're 15 minutes in. Strata winner, Torreno winner, Liege winner, Lombardia winner, Tade Pagacha. I think he is fourth or fifth favourite in the betting. He lines up with Trentin, probably his strongest teammate, Steker, Langen, Brunel, Björg, Troyer, not the strongest team. He doesn't really need one, though. Well, actually, that's not true, Benji. This, uh, Tour of Flanders is not like lining up in decent position before the Perisud, where you just hop onto another train. Does Is he going to feel the lack of teammates positioning him before the base of the steep cobble climbs? 
I think it somewhat depends. I do think that he's got, for example, Trenton that can help him a lot there. But next to that, Trenton might not be overly happy that he has to work for Pogacar in the few races that fit him in the season to actually do something for himself. And I heard Tom Bonin on a, on a different podcast this week saying that he doesn't expect Trentin to work for Pogacar that easily, which I would say, oh, disgrace, come on. Pogacar is clearly a better candidate, even though we haven't seen him too much on the Tour of Flanders Parkour. I do truly believe that he's one of the favorites of this race. And that's because he's got that long race endurance. He's good in like chaotic circumstances, stuff like that. And that fits to these races. But as you said, positioning is key when it comes to cobble climbs. And that's where he does not have that much experience. I'm curious to see what he does on Dwarves of London, which is written as we are speaking into this microphone right now. So we can't say that yet. But depending on what we see in that race, we will know whether he's pretty good at positioning himself or not on these cobble climbs and whether he can play a role when it comes to his favorite role or not. But I've said it, I think I, I, think I have a bet on Pogacar since... End of December last year at odd 81 for this race. So I guess I'm hoping that he does well when it comes to his positioning. Canaryberg, 80Ks to go, 90Ks to go. Pagacha goes into a move with Morich, Sturthen, and Dries van Hestel. <laughs> Do Ansgren MVP and Wout react immediately? I think you should. Ooh, I think they can send someone with them. I think I, I don't think Wout Fanon and Laporte should both react to that. I think Laporte is the one I'd say that should react True. if that happens. And Van der Poel is probably going to be like, okay, panic, panic, what do I do? Because I'm alone, <laughs> I don't have a team to do this. I'm probably going to react. And True. at that point, when Van der Poel goes, Fanon will probably jump with him as well. So in the end, that I don't think Pogacar can get away on the Canadi Betty. I think, yeah, I think Pogaccio will try and slip into secondary moves earlier and hope he's ahead of the race and it comes back to him with a smaller group of favourites and then he can sort of sit on. He won't be looked at to do anything. He always flies under the radar somehow. It's kind of like Alaphilippe. We saw how good Alaphilippe was, a slender sort of 65-kilo yep. guy at Tour of Flanders. Uh, but Alaphilippe's a special guy with insane punch. But... Yeah, I'm, I'm underrating Pogaccio a little bit, I think, but I don't. It's going to be difficult for him, mainly because if he goes to a sprint, it's not like going to a sprint with Roglic and co. If you go to a sprint with Laporte, these guys are fast, like properly fast, big peak watts. Um, but yeah, he is, he's lining up, and it's awesome to see double Tour de France winner, Liège Lombardia winner, lining up at Flanders. So big respect for that. Uh, Intermarché is the secondary teams now. Intermarché got Christoph, Bistrom, Kleister, Kent, Pascalon, Petit, Van der Horn. Van der Horn will be in a move early. You just know he will. No go my. Um, he's going back to Eritrea, so I don't really see them having a good chance to win except for like a Taco 200k solo. Lotto though, Benji, I want to focus on them a little bit. Wellens, Campanats, Vermeers, Van Moor, Grignard, Frison, Bullens. They need... They need a top five result here, or they are in serious trouble. How does Campanaz get that top five result? He's had good legs. He, he just he has to ride passive. He has to ride like Van Avermaet when he rode for third. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Because Lotto has been very clear that they're not riding for random places. They're riding for the victory in every race they ride. So what I think they will do is that Campanats will do what he does all the time, is try and go in these early moves earlier on. Like, for example, let's say Berchten Hauter, Kanadi Berg with roughly 80k to go. Groups might try and get away on those climbs. That's when a Campanats will probably do something. Or if a larger group goes over the Auto Quartermont, the second last one, or even on that second last Auto Quartermont, he might try something while the others might be waiting a bit more for the path they're waiting after, stuff like that. So I expect... Lotto to try and benefit from early moves. It worked last year in Roubaix with Vermeer. Very different race, though. But I do expect them to uh, try and use that quite decently. And I think they've got enough riders to try and go into early moves where they can try it once at, like, 100k to go, once at 80k to go, and then leave one rider behind for the latter part if all failed so far. So I don't think I expect a rider of this team in the top five, though. 
I think VC should ride completely passive. If Wout Van Aert attacks, never react. I don't want to see him on TV for 265 <laughs> kilometers. I think if Wout or Asgren or MVDP goes solo, he should not contribute for a second to the chase. And then in the last five kilometers, he should attack a fatigued and demoralized group for minor placings. I think that's how he should try and get the best result possible. Yes, that helps in the points department, but let's not act like third at Tour of Flanders is a bad result for Victor Campanas either. And I think if he tries to be big man and close big attacks from Wout, like we saw on, was it on Luke Benji, the last climb? Wout just, yeah, yeah. Campanas yeah. was the only guy that tried to follow him and just destroyed himself after he was really strong that race. And he still came fifth, but he should try and do what SKA did at Hen Fableham. Um, yeah, that's my view on Lotto. Otherwise, Ineos, Benji, Hidcock, Kvyakovsky, Narvaez, Rose, Sheffield, Swift, Van Baal. It's been a bit of a classic season to forget for them from so far. Narvaez crashed the other day. Hidcock's had stomach issues or something. He dropped in MSR. He was out of position the other day at E3. Sheffield's a beast. Uh, no, no clock, no Ben Turner on the start list, surprising. I think I think Peacock's just got to hope he's in okay form and he can follow on the climbs and just try and get Van Baal in, in early moves like Worlds and um, and DDV last year, Benji. I don't really – I'm not that hyped on this team, to be honest. Me neither. We've seen multiple times that Van Baal is the one that goes early. Also in RVV a few years ago when he got a uh, top five, was it 2017? Yes, fourth in uh, – 2017 after Gilbert van Avermaet and Terpstra because he was very early on into the attack and eventually that worked out. Yes, that was the addition that Sagan, Nassen and van Avermaet did crash. So something did occur there that led to that top five. But I'd say he's the guy that should try that again. Go early in the moves. That's how he does well in the same way that I expect Lotto to do stuff. Go early in those moves and try and use that to his advantage. That's how he won last year in Dwarves of London and an attack with was it 52 kilometers to go a solo? That's crazy stuff. It won't be that easy in uh, Tour of Flanders, but he might be able to stick ahead of the riders before they get to the Outer Quartermont, uh, the last two Outer Quartermonts, and therefore have the advantage there. So in between the climbs, try and make an advantage so that he doesn't get dropped on the climbs is how I view that. When it comes to Pitcock and Hervias, I have no clue what Pitcock's state of mind is at the moment and state of health after... Uh, Milano Sanremo and so forth after having good training days before Milano Sanremo. Perhaps he has a good day here, but I just don't expect it really. I don't want to expect anything from Wada that I don't expect anything from. And the advice is the one that crashed, like you say. But I do think he didn't have too much from that crash, so I expect him to perhaps be the strongest rider in this squad together with Von Bala in this race. They rode for him at GP de Denain. He was good at Kerner. He was in that late move with Laporte and Taco Taco Burrito Burrito. So he's in in good shape. I agree that he's... Yeah, I mean, Peacock's not going to ride as domestique for him, but I think Novas could end up being their best-placed rider. Um, whipping through now some of the sort of second-tier candidates or not the major contenders for the win... RK have Capio and Swift and Russo. They're looking for points. Uh, there's Enemy of the Podcast. Johannesson's actually here. He's very punchy. He's been good. Movistar got Aaron Baru, Garcia Cortina, Kanta, Erviti. They're sort of all maybe probably hoping for a top 10. DSM Degenkolb, Echoff, hoping for anything. Signs of life. Grupama Benji. Kung. What? What does Stefan Kung need to do to get a top result here for himself? Or should he just help set up Madawaz? Because Madawaz looks so good the other day. I think he's going to top 10. I think Madawaz is the rider that we declared a few years ago on this podcast, uh, near the start of this, po this podcast, as a rider that could literally top 10 every single monument in his career because he's so versatile. And he's showing that certainly in this classic season as well. He was strong at... I think it was E3 where he was strong to get away the likes of Kung. I do believe that Kung should have his full leadership role as well. Uh, Co-leadership can work with those two. And Kung was extremely strong at the start of this classic season. At Omlo Open so forth, he was literally the strongest rider in the race, except for Wout Fenard, according to me, at least. And then later on, it 
was still pretty strong, I think, in the last stage of Paris Nice, where he got a top five, if my mind serves me right. Yeah, and then the Wafanart Roglic Yates yeah. stage, the hard one. Yeah, and therefore I do feel like he still has good form. He just needs a bit of luck when it comes to uh like in Hand Wavelham he was working for your boy Demar. So clearly he didn't have the opportunities there because that race was more fitting to Demar. I do think that RVV is more fitting to uh to Kung. And I expect him to try and go solo at certain points, try and slip into groups at certain points and benefit from that. And I hope it works because this guy this guy deserves to win something at some point, like a big race, because European champs, ITT and so forth. He's always second in time trolls these days. So oh, I'd love to see him do well here personally. He's just gotta not work for people who aren't on his team. Novel concept. Cofidis have got not a great team. Uh Allegar for Lies van Bilsen, Bora. Again, and not shown very much. Jordi Mays, Perstelberger, Haller, Archibald, Pollitt. Looking at Haller, maybe could be the best there. Bahrain, Hausler, Masiuk, Milan, Moric, Sutlin turns right. I think Wright and Moric will be getting into early moves. Fred Wright could top five this race easily. <laughs> easily. I, I think it depends. I do think he can uh, top three, top 40, sprint in the second group or like the peloton that is chasing the uh riders that got away on the climbs if it's still a peloton to be named perhaps 15 riders or something that sprint will probably be one right christoph like every year <laughs> in the tour of flanders but i don't know top five is not going to be easy for fred right he's shown quite a good form so far this season that eventually was not that amazing when it comes to uh san remo i think and well, no, they uh, cooked that's him. because he didn't ride it the turner yeah. They they sold him out. They paced yeah. for Colbrelli when they had quick people in the group. It was it was yeah. outrageous. Um, Morich though will be just trying to slip away at every opportunity for Bahrain. Uh, bike exchange going for Matthews. Hopefully get a top five is what they're looking for. Astana. They're not getting like the Raz getting paid late. They're awful this year. They got Moscon. on. Don't expect much. Uh, Israel desperately need points. They got full Sang, Van Mark, Beermans. Ooh, they should actually be doing well, these guys. They should Trek. really be top 10. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Trek. <laughs> Pretty what strong did you team, make you know? of Sturvin? What did you make of what he said after Gen Wevelhem? That I hoped I would just get third. I wasn't thinking about the win in that group with Pedersen behind. So if I was the DS Benji, I would have blown up. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fucking bullshit. Like this guy, they've got Peterson behind. It's also the DS's fault that they didn't really do anything there. So I don't necessarily blame Steven alone for the tactics in that race. They should not have chosen Steven over Peterson in that situation. In the end, we able game because Peterson is the one of the better sprinters in the group behind. And with a lead out of Steven, that could have done a lot. And when it comes to Steven, it was destined that he would be either third or fourth in that front group. So yeah, in the end. I don't know, his mentality to get third is a bit meh, in my personal opinion. I didn't like that. And um, let's hope he has a better mentality when it comes to RVV and it doesn't just ride for a top five here because they've got a strong team. Quinn Simmons, Peterson, Steven. Peterson's bit, he was a bit eager to respond to things that he shouldn't respond to in here in Wevelgem. So if he tunes that a bit better, then I do think he can play a big role here. I think Peterson, didn't he like almost win this race a few years ago where he was like solo for a while behind Ter Terpstra when he was on uh, yeah. maybe Danish the Danish pro Conti team Rival, I think in like 2018 um I think Wout ruins him on the climbs I think Pedersen's gonna get ruined um but they don't want to go to a sprint with him they know yeah. he, he he showed his hand in Paranese Benji he showed yeah. his hand too much that he's too fast I think yeah I think it's gonna be tough for him um I think they get Schoen's up the road, though. What about is EF de desperately needs something from Betty or Biska? Dual Volgren, they just need them to do something. It's impossible to predict what they'll do. No Sagan, Benji. They do have a former Tour of Flanders winner on the team, Terpstra, but Van Gestel, Turgis. Is Turgis going to top five this? He's, what, second at San Remo, 13th at E3. He was good at this last year. Eighth, fourth in back-to-back -back years. How does Turgis win this race? I think Turgis wins this race by either slipping away early, but then again, his hill skills are pretty good. So if he potentially can hang on to a rider like Vernard and Asgren after a lot, the last part of it, which is a big thing, 
then he might be that rider that surprises in the sprint because he's got a kick. And I, I think that's going to be hard. But the other situation is where he gets in front a bit earlier and benefits from that later on by still being in the front of the race after the uh, climbs are over in that situation. But I think it'll be hard for Tuji to win this race. I think a top five is definitely doable. He was, I think, uh, together with Laporte, they were third and fourth, I think, over the uh, Paterberg last year. That says a lot about the fact that these riders were underrated last year. And going into this year, I'd argue that a lot of teams are going to be intrigued by Turgi as a rider. And we're going to see him enter a uh, very strong team at the end of the season, I hope, because he deserves it. But for now, I do uh, I do expect something. I don't expect Ries van Gessel to do a copy-paste of Kandwevel Game and Podium again. It'd be really surprising. But I guess if they can combine their... Uh, their strengths, Von Gessel going early while Turgi stays behind a bit, that could work out. I do think they'll change their mind about Von Gessel, where at the end of Wevelhem he was clear domestique and still got podium. So perhaps at RVV he might be more of a co-leader. Now for predictions, I think uh, I think Yumbo win this. I think I think Laporte wins. And Wampanoag comes second, and he's been sitting on a group with Asger and MVP. I think that's what I think could happen. Uh, but I, th- I think Yumbo wins. Uh, Quick step, just not. They look not good. They just look a shadow of themselves. And MVP. MSR is different. Different race to this. This is a different six and a half hours, seven hours. A lot more energy early on. So we'll see how he's recovered. See his endurance here. MSR is different. But yeah, that's my prediction. What do you think happens? Okay, I've got a more specific prediction that probably will never happen, ever. But I think that in the group behind, Vanderpool and Vanad will be looking at each other. Therefore, we'll get a group at the front that includes Laporte and Pogacar. Pogacar wins ahead of Laporte. And in the group behind, we'll have, I don't know, Kristoff winning the group sprint, I guess. Because Vanad and Vanderpool will, will be looking at each other so much that they might not even ride away from the group on the path. Right, Pogacar beats very... Laporte in a sprint. Yeah. On the flat. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it's, don't think it's, it's happening, possible. mate. It's happening. <laughs> Who's Pogaccio beaten in a sprint before? Well, almost Van Aert at the Olympics, but that doesn't really count, does it? <laughs> so he almost beat Van Aert after he did McCooney pass. LBL sprint at the end? Come on. It was okay. a flat sprint. He beat, beat Al Philippe, yeah, when Al Philippe stuffed it. Yeah, okay. Al Alaphil- yeah, Philippe <laughs> won a flat sprint in Milano San Remo. I bet that. Laporte was probably in that Peloton EB. So it's all connecting if you look at multiple yeah, yeah, at like the same a, time. When, yeah, he beat him in a sprint. That means, yeah, none of it means anything. <laughs> okay. Outsiders for Tour of Flanders. Uh, I've already said Matt was. Uh, it's hard to... Please camp an arts. I reckon... Who, I'm trying to think of the most random podium spot. I think Campanat's podiums. I want to see you on the podium. Come on, Victor. Ride smart. You have to. <laughs> oh, God. Campanat's podium. I'm not 100% certain about that. But when it comes to uh, my, mm, oh, my outsider for this race, I kind of want Turgide to, to do well. I think a lot of people still see Pogacar as an outsider. I consider him a favorite for this race. I'd say Turgi podiums, third. That's not that. He came fourth last year or the year before. Oh, yeah, okay. You're right. Okay. That's not an outsider. <laughs> okay. Like, who's left that can do that then? Like, is Kugin an outsider you consider? Man, Mark. No, right? Who? But Betiol, he won this race two years, yeah, three years ago. Yeah, looked terrible. Yeah, but he hasn't ridden like a couple races here, right, Betiol? So he's kind of new into it. Yeah. Not advice. I don't know. I see it. I see it playing out with the strongman up top. So, yeah, I, it's hard to pick. It's hard to pick. But I think Jumbo win. And uh, whether uh, Wout's happy with Christoph going up the road will be interesting to watch. That was our men's Tour of Flanders preview. Uh, we'll have the RVV recap podcast afterwards, then straight into preparation for Paris Roubaix. The classics are flying thick and thin. Thanks, as always, to Zwift, our presenting sponsor. If you want to check out Zwift for a free seven-day trial, you can go to Zwift.com through the link in the description. Otherwise, me and Benji are going to watch the end of Dwar's Duel and then have a little bit of a rest. Maybe an interview later this week, maybe not. We'll stay tuned. Until then, ciao.